Và Ken. Okay. Now, what we want to find is not our usual first anthem. What we want to find is this one. From the fifth term until the ninth term. You take S5, you cannot get this. You take S9, also you cannot get this. So in order to get from 5 to 9, I write out the first nine terms. 1 until 9. Then, I write out from the first term until the fourth term. Not, not until fifth, you know. I want fifth to nine. But I write down nine and the first four terms. Now, why I want to do until first four terms? Because when I take the S9 minus S4, what do you think we will get? The S9 minus S4 S9 minus S4, what will we get? Hmm. We will get something like this. The first term and the first term minus no more. Second term and second term, they minus no more. Third and third, no more. Fourth minus the fourth, no more. So we are left with from the nine, from the fifth term until the ninth term. So in order to get from the fifth term to the ninth term, I take S9 minus S4. If I want from 11 to 20, what must I do? 11 to 20. 11 to 20. Hmm. What S minus? S11. Sorry? S20. S20 minus S11. Can all you, you, you minus S11, then the 11 disappear already. So you must take until S10, one less. Uh, so if I take uh, S9 minus S5, then the S5 and S5 will cancel. Away. So I cannot take S9 minus S5. I take S9 minus S4, one less, so that the fifth term is still there. Okay or not? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now okay. you minus... Uh, S9 minus S4, you will get from the 5th until the ninth term. So, how to get S9 minus S4? You write out the formula for S9, the formula for S4. right? And you substitute in the A and the R. Where the A and R? A and R come from here. We have found earlier. So we put down three, three, two, two. But you have to minus lah, huh? You have to minus. Okay. So uh, answer is uh, you use your calculator. Answer is one nine six zero two. So far, okay, or not? Mm, okay. okay. Can follow. Okay. So now we. Go ahead and do something called the S infinity. Now, what is the meaning of S infinity? S infinity means uh, let's say something, something like, like this. Uh, let's say we take question number one. So I draw out somewhere here. Hmm, where should I write out? Uh? Okay, now uh, let's say if let's say if I have this one uh, like question number one here, eight, four, two, and so on. Okay, so eight, four, two. Uh, if I want to add up all these numbers, uh, it is possible to add up all these numbers or not? Yes. But the, the thing is, uh, I, I don't want to just add up 
I want to add up the number until many, many terms. So you may think that, oh, if I add up until many, many terms, uh, the number will be very big and I cannot, I cannot, I cannot find that so big the number. The number can be, you can always add on the number and the number can keep on increasing. The answer is no. If you add this 8, 4, 2, and uh, this one will be 1, half, then next one will be 104, 108, 116, and so on. You see the number become smaller and smaller. So when you add a smaller and smaller number, the number cannot become very big. It has a limit. It has a limit, right? Hmm. So uh, let's say I have this formula. For r less than 1, uh, I told you we have to use this formula, right? Hmm. Okay. Now, let's say the R is 0 0.1. Let's say the R is 0 0.1, right? So that means here, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, right? So if the R is 0 0.1, R square is 0 0.01. R cube is 0 0.001. R to the power of 4 is 0 0.0001. So the number is becoming smaller and smaller. Okay. Now if the number becomes smaller and smaller, let's say if the R is 10, you will have 0 0.00001. Do you know how big is this number 0 0.001? I don't know. I know it's very, very small already. Now let's say if I have a number r to the power n, and this n is a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. The bigger the n, uh, the more zeros I have. The more zeros I have, the smaller will be the answer. So let's say if this n approaches infinity, infinity is a very, very big number, then this r to the power of n become a very, very small number. Now, how are we going to read this? We read it as n approaches infinity, r to the power of n approaches zero. Approaches means nearer and nearer to zero. Right? So now we look at this r to the power of n. If it is equals to zero, uh, you see what will happen. So the, the n here becomes infinity, the r to the power of n becomes zero. No, when r to the power this has become infinity. This has become zero. What will we get? We will get this. Because the, this term here, r to the power n becomes zero. So there is no more term by the side there. We only have a over 1 minus r. Now this means that if we want to find all the numbers uh, until infinity, we can use this formula. As infinity equals to a over 1 minus r. Ah, that's all. No more n there. Why is there no more n? Because the n is a very big number already. So we don't have the, the if n is a very big number, then that r to the power of n is zero. So no more, no more there already. That, that r to the power of n. So we only have this one. A over 1 minus r. Very simple. So now the first question is find the sum to infinity of each of the following geometric progression. So that means uh, 8, 4, 2, 1, half, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 16, 1 over 32, 1 over 64. I want to add up all these numbers. What is the answer, right? So we, we identify what is the A and R. A is 8. R is 4 divided by 8. Is 1 over 2. So what is S infinity? A over 1 minus R. So it becomes one, uh, 8 over 1 minus 2. Because uh, 1 over 2. Because the, the half is minus half is 1 over 2. So it's 8 divided by 1 over 2. 8 divided by 1 over 2 is 16. So it means that if you add up all these numbers, from 8 until very, very big number, you will get 16. But uh, actual fact, you cannot get the 
infinity, right? So it will be 15.9, 15.99, 15.9999, like that. So it becomes very close to 16, right? So actually, uh, becomes so many nine that actually you can consider it as 16, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's say I want to find okay. Let's say I want to do question number number C. 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 So can you find what is A uh, for C? Uh? What is A, what is R, and what is S infinity? Uh, you try. You try and see. Use this formula. Do it exactly the same way. Question one. Uh, you write on a piece of paper. Then you look at this example. You follow this example. Write on a piece of paper. Do this C. Then you show me. Ah, oh, correct. Okay, this is correct. It's two two or five, correct? Hmm? It's two or five, right? So we continue. We continue. Next one, right? The next type of question. Maybe you try this one. Uh, maybe you try this B and number two. Huh? You try B and number two. Try this. Try this and this. Okay. Uh, next one. Number. Hmm, this one height person. Now you look at these uh, numbers here, 0 0.8888 until many, many 8. Nah. There's no end to this 8. Nah. Then there's a number 363636. Three, 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 many, many 36 cannot end on. Nah. So actually, this number is a decimal number. And they want to express these decimal numbers as a fraction. How are you going to do it as a fraction? So I'll show you, right? Now, let's say, for example, we have this number. 
1.32222 until many many twos, right? Right. So this 1.322 uh, the number that is repeating, the number is repeating, we don't write so many times. We put a dot on top of the number that is repeating. So when you put a dot on top of the number that is repeating, it means that 1.3, then you see the 2 there got a dot, then it will be 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 like that. So this number is actually a decimal number. I want to express this, de this decimal number as a fraction. How are you going to do this number as a fraction? Okay. So first of all, I write, I break this number into addition of many, many parts. This 1.322222 is 1.3 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.002 plus 0 0.0002. So you will have uh, 1.32222 and so on. So when I have written down in this form, and you can see uh, distinctly two things. The number that is repeating, this 0 0.02 is 2 or 100. This number is 2 or 1,000. This 2 over 1,000 is 10,000, and 2 over 100,000, and so on. Now, this, all these numbers behind, uh, the addition of all these numbers behind, they actually form a geometric sequence. This one is not related to this, but all the other numbers at the back, they are related to one another. Okay, let me repeat. What is our aim? We have a decimal number that is recurring. Recurring means that they keep on repeating, repeating, repeating like that. But this number, not the whole number is repeating. Only one number at the back is repeating. So this number that is repeating at the back there makes it, uh, how to say, make it very inaccurate because there are so many, I cannot, cannot write out so many numbers. So it's not very accurate. So I would like to express this number that is repeating in the form of a fraction. If I can express this number in terms of fraction, then it will solve my problem. The fraction is a, an exact number. Fraction is an exact number. Whereas you put decimal like that, it is not an exact number. So what is my aim now? My aim is to make this number into a fraction. Okay, huh? What is my aim? Make that number into a fraction so that the number is very accurate. Okay, now, how to make this number into a fraction? So I'm going to break this number into many parts. Into many parts. So this number 1.3, I make one part. The first two, I make it into one part. The second two, I make into another part. The next two I make into another part. So when I break it into these many, many parts, I can see that the first number is, is not, it does not belong to a geometric sequence. But all the numbers behind that I underline in red color, they form a geometric sequence. So if they form a geometric sequence, I can find the sum of all these numbers, numbers from this first one until infinity. Okay, so far, can you follow? Can. Can, okay, very good, can. So my aim now, this 13 over 10 is not part of a geometric series, but the underline in red one until very, very, very far away, and very, very far away, they form a geometric series. So this part, we don't care first. The 13 over 10, we don't care because it's not a geometric series. But the part behind there, what is the first term? This part. The first term is 2 over 100. Second term, 2 over 1,000. So now I want to find the R. I take this number, divide by the number in front. It's 1 over 10. It's 1 over 10, right? Okay. Now, if I want to find the sum of all the numbers, I use the formula 
S infinity. S infinity. I substitute in A, 2 over 100. I substitute in R here, 1 over 10. So you use your calculator, you type, 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 type out. Oh, you will have the top 2 over 100. The bottom is 10 over 9. 10 over 9. Then we multiply together, answer is 1 over 45. 1 over 45. Right. Now, you try to use your calculator. You take 1 divided by 45. You see what is the answer. Use your calculator and divide. Mm. 0 0.0. Oh, correct. But this 1 over 45, uh, 0 0.0222 is the, the number behind only. But if including the number in front, uh, what is the value? Uh? So this 1.3222 uh, 1 is 13 over 10. This one. 13 over 10 plus all the number in red color is 1 over 45. So 13 over 10 plus 1 over 45. Can you use your calculator, the ABC, to add up these two fractions? Is it 1 and 29 over 90? Is my... Yes. Uh, yes, correct. Then you press the ABC button and see whether this 1, 29 or 90, is it, is, is it like that? Is it like that? Yes. Yes. You take 1 over 1, 29 over 90, you press the ABC button, you will get 1, 1, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay. So uh, this is how we're going to change a recurring decimal. Recurring decimal into a fraction. Okay. Now we look at this 0 0.363636. Now it's not one number repeating, no. two numbers repeating. So these two numbers repeating, 0 0.363636, how is the short form? The short form is 0 0.36 with a dot on top of the 3 and a dot on top of the 6. Right? So this means the 3 and 6, they are repeating. That means two numbers are repeating. So again, I try to break this number into many, many parts. Like, like over here. Like over here. I try to break it into many parts. So how to break them into many parts? Okay, it's like that. 0 0.36363636. I can break it into 0 0.36 plus 0 0.0036 plus 0 0.0000036. Now, can you see what is the difference between this one here and this one here? Is there any difference between this one here and this one here? You can repeating two numbers. Ah. You can repeating two numbers. Ah. Here, the number of zero uh, doesn't increase one by one. The number of zero, they increase two by two. At first, there's no zero here. Now, two zero. Then now here, how many zero? Four zeros. It's not two zero, then become three zero. No. It becomes four zero. But then here, uh, one zero, two zero, three zeros. Can you see the, the number of zero increase by one, one, one only? Here, the number of zero increased by two, 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 like that because there are two spaces. When I take away, got two empty spaces. When I take away another two, another two empty spaces. So the empty spaces come in two, two, two. There, because only one number, the empty spaces come one, 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 like that. Now, if that is the case, when I change them into fraction, 0 0.36 is 36 over 100. 0 0.0036 is 36 over 10,000. 36 over 10,000. So if you look at this, what is the first term here? The A is 36 over 
hundred, thirty six or hundred. What is the R here? Uh, R, uh, you take the behind, divide by the front. If you don't know, never mind. Use your calculator. Three six zero the one oh one zero 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 divide by three six zero zero like that. And you will get the R is one over one hundred. Here, what is the R? One over ten. So if two numbers repeating is hundred. If one number repeating, one over ten. Is that okay? Mm. Okay. Right. So I know the A, I know the R. Can I find what is S infinity? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you find what is S infinity, A over 1 minus R. So become uh, A is 36 over 100. 1 minus R is 1 over 100. 1 over 100 is 99 over 100. Divide by 99 over 100 is multiplied by 100 over 99. So when you multiply this, you get 4 over 11. So you take your calculator, 4 divided by 11, and tell me what is the answer? 0 0.363636. So it means that this number, 0 0.363636, is actually 4 over 11. It's actually 4 over 11. Right. So now I have successfully changed this recurring decimal into a fraction. What is the point then? Can you still remember what is the point? The point is 0 0.3636 is not an accurate number. But 4 over 11 is accurate. It's exactly. This is the exact number. This 3636, uh, there are so many 36, you cannot write out so many 36. So if you cannot finish writing all the 36, whatever number you have written is not accurate. But if you express this number in terms of fraction, 4 over 11, that number is very accurate. Okay, right. Now uh, you use this 8, 8, uh, you break them up into many, sum of many numbers, 0 0.8, 0 0.08, 0 0.008, and like this, uh, like this. Then you make them into fractions, then you form a geometric progression, then you find S infinity. You tell me what is this number in fraction form. Okay, you, you, you try to mm. you write on a piece of paper, then you show me.
10 or not? Mm. 10. 10. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, correct. Very good. Very good. Okay. So now we come back to this one. Uh, you know how to lose, use this formula as infinity. You can try number four and number five. Four and five. Then uh, you look at your, your lecture notes. Uh, yeah, there's this sum to infinity. Uh, so you can try four, five, six, and seven, right? Try four, five, six, four, five, six, and uh, seven, right? Mm. Okay, we only have uh, six minutes left. So six minutes left, we continue on Tuesday. But Tuesday, it will be the the more difficult one. 